Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Addicted to Success podcast. I'm your host, Joel Brown, and today I am with the man of the hour, Michael Bernard Beckwith, Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith. He's a motivational speaker, a spiritual leader, a meditation teacher. Uh, He also featured on the hit movie, The Secret, and is coming out uh, in the the new movie, Rise Up, uh, as another featured... uh, leader that is sharing amazing advice on how you can contribute more and how to make an impact and share your gifts with the world. He is also the founder of Agape University and uh, is also part of the TLC, uh, which is the Transformational Studies and Leadership Council. So, Michael, thank you so much for uh, coming here and being a part of the Addicted to Success podcast and sharing your wisdom with the world. Joel, thank you so much for for having me. It's my it's my joy to be with you and my joy to be with all these powerful people listening in who are also yearning and leaning into real success. Beautiful. So I'm going to kick this interview off with what is, uh, what is something uh, totally amazing to you and something fascinating that you've picked up on in the last month or so, something that you've learned? Something that I've learned? Uh, a lot of my learning recently has been in the uh, lucid dreams I've had. And uh, uh, quite recently, I, I, I awoke in a lucid dream, and my entire being was emanating with a, a sense of peace. And the peace was really real. I, I teach that peace is the dynamic of harmonizing good. It's, it's not the absence of conflict. It's actually uh, a quality that's radiating. So when I woke up in this dream, it was emanating from my entire body. Because in my mind, I'm always saying the word peace over and over and over again. So it clicked into another level. And now I can feel it as I'm just awake. I can feel this dynamic of peace when I go into environments. I can feel it emanating from me that's bringing people to a level of coherence, a level of greater success, greater well-being. So that's, that was to- that's totally amazing for me personally. Uh, I think another thing that's amazing, I've, I've just recently returned from Europe. I did a speaking tour through uh, Spain, London twice, uh, uh, Copenhagen. And it was just wonderful to see all of these people rising up and embracing uh, uh, these teachings, new models of success and well-being, and also to work with the spiritual leaders out of Europe, who many of them didn't even know each other and then through uh, a brother by the name, a beautiful man by the name of, of Steiner uh, Deflison, brought all these spiritual leaders together so that they could create a, a total vibrational community to embrace Europe. Mm. And so those are two things I've been involved in that have been very, very amazing to me. Wow, what a powerful experience. That's amazing. So you mentioned before that you focus a lot on peace, and I believe that the world needs more of it. <laughs> right so yes. how do we how do we tap into something else that is within us as well which is our true power to make this world a better place how do we tap into our unique gifts and our true power first of all we have to be aware that we have gifts and talents that everyone has arrived in this incarnation with talents gifts and capacities to express no one is left without it And so we can actually begin to talk to the gifts within us and ask them to reveal themselves. The gifts are a part of us. And if we don't set them free, they will become encumbrances in our life. They will create disturbances. They will create issues of the body, issues of the mind. The gifts want to be expressed. They're dynamic. So we have to put ourselves in what I call an appreciative inquiry. We have to ask the universe and ask ourselves, what is the gift I am to share? What's my main gift that I am to share, and what are its tributaries? Mm. And as you begin to ask, the gift will begin to speak to you. You begin to look in your past and see what you were really good at. You'll begin to, to, to recall dreams that you've had in terms of when you were expressing your gift. And then you'll take the next step, claim them, and then take the next step and walk in the direction of actualizing them. Everyone has a gift to share. Now, this is very important because people have been hypnotized into thinking that something external to them is going to make them happy. Hmm. But what makes you happy and what keeps you in bliss is the activation and the expression of your potential. That's the only thing that keeps you perennially happy. If you're not activating, cultivating, and expressing your potential, 
you can gain a whole bunch of stuff, but you're not going to be happy. Yes. But if you're activating, cultivating, and expressing your giftedness, in the expression is the joy, bliss, and ecstasy. And so your gift will either, if you don't express it, it will create disturbance. If you do express it, it will create bliss. Wonderful. I love the way you put that. You know, it's interesting. Uh, when I share my experience of how I've discovered my gifts and how I share it with the world, uh, with my students, I say that, you know, throughout the years, I had these little things, which I like to call the whispers of wisdom. They, they, they come up, it's coming from my purpose. And it's just like this little reminder, this little tap on the shoulder that I wasn't paying attention to for so long. And so when I did start paying attention to it and I started to actually like tune into that intuition, my whole world completely changed. I started yes. trusting that like something is here. The signs keep popping up. You can call it the universe. You can call it the unconscious. You're tuning in, whatever it is. It's like they started to appear because I, I, I was more conscious of it and allowed that to be something that I was going to let guide me in my life. So I know exactly what you're saying. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. When you said when you tuned into it, so you became interested. Interesting. And once yeah. an individual becomes interested, uh, all the secrets are revealed. Mm. When George Washington Carver... Um, was asked about all of these wonderful uh, inventions that he had created. You know, they asked him how he did it. And he said that if you fall in love with something deep enough, it will reveal its secrets to you. Wow. So he asked the peanut. He fell in love with the peanut. He fell in love with the plants. He fell in love with the soil. And they revealed their secrets to him. And so as we fall in love with our, who we really are, and then and tune in and become really interested in expressing our gifts, nothing will be hidden from us. It will show up in signs and symbols and whisperings of wisdom in our soul, guidance, all in a language and in a way that we can understand and act upon. So beautifully put. Michael, how do we become more self-aware? Because I feel like what you're saying as well is like self-awareness is such a key thing when it comes to becoming successful or being successful at tapping into your true self and and understanding yourself more what are some like exercises or insights or understandings that you have around becoming more self-aware what do you becoming self-aware is extremely important many people are self-aware with the small s they're aware of their issues their problems their fears what they're overly concerned about they have a lot of worry and doubt and then there's self-aware where you're aware of the larger self. You're aware of your intrinsic self. And so it is very difficult to become self-aware without some practice of meditation or introspection where you're pulling away from the world of effects and circumstances and beginning to open yourself up to the, to the inner whisperings of your soul. And, and, and as that happens, you begin to be aware that you are aware. Being aware that you are aware, that's consciousness. And as you become aware that you are aware, then you become cognizant of the fact that you're not the stuff that's moving through your mind. You are aware of the stuff. When you become aware that you are aware, the next thing that happens is something called choice. Choice is a function of awareness. So once you're aware, you now can choose. When you're not aware, you react. So people who aren't aware react to circumstances. People who are aware choose. They choose to be kind. They choose to be generous. They choose to be forgiving. They choose to be creative regardless of what the circumstance is. And then what happens? Your life is transformed based on your moment-by-moment -moment choices, which is an extension of self-awareness. So there has to be some moments of silence, there has to be moments of asking right questions, mm -hmm. not what's wrong, but what's right, what's trying to emerge through me. You know, I, I originated something called the life visioning process many years ago, and we have those questions embedded into it, where we ask, you know, what's the vision for my life? What must I become in order to manifest this vision? What resources do I already have that can be used for the vision? What am I willing to let go of? We ask certain questions and we discover that we can start right where we are, regardless of the condition we're in. Person can be in prison, 
person can be in a bad job, a person can have illness of the body, they can have limited finances, but if they begin to ask the right questions and become interested, the presence, which is never an absence, articulating itself through the universe, will begin to guide you along the way. And you find yourself taking step by step by step. And the next thing you know, you look back over your life and you've come a great distance. You've manifested more joy in your life. You've become healthier, more successful, because you've become, as you said, you become self-aware and activated choice. Mm. I love that, yeah. You ask powerful questions, you get powerful answers. And sometimes all you need to do is ask yourself. (laughs) That's it. Yeah. See, most people ask, many people ask disempowering questions. Yeah. They ask, what's wrong? Who's to blame? What did I do wrong? Why me? Those are all disempowering. Mm. You have to ask empowering questions. And the the universe will answer any question you ask. So you might as well ask something great. (laughs) (laughs) That's a really good good point. A good question to live in is how can I get better than this? So if something bad is happening, you think it's something not good, how can it be better than this? The universe will answer it. If something really good is happening, you ask the same question. How can it get better than this? Because the good is infinite. So you don't want to stop at your good when there's some better. Yeah. And you want to stop at better when there's excellence. So you can live in that question all day long. Something happens you don't like, how can it get better than this? Something happens you don't like, how can it get better than this? So the perennial unfoldment continues, you see. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's funny that you say that. Uh, whenever I'm uh, challenged with a situation, now I say, oh, well, that look, that's interesting. <laughs> I used to right. swear and whatever and go off the handle about it all and get frustrated. But right. yeah, it is the words you use, right? And then your, like, your mind and your words like follow each other, right? It's like a loop. It's like you got to be really careful with what you're putting out there and what you're saying. Yeah, I love that. Right. You, you, you can go like um, something happens. You, you go, so what? And then you say, what's so? Then you say, ah, so. So <laughs> something bad happens. You just you, Your greatest affirmation would be, so what? It's no big deal. I can make it through this. And then you say, what's so? And your mind starts to look for the good. What yeah. good is here that I presently cannot see? What's so? And then you see, it says, ah, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you go from so what <laughs> to, to what so? To ah, so. Ah, so. Yeah. <laughs> What a great practice. I love that. So, Michael, what would you say uh, that you put into practice that you feel you've gained the most growth from, like personal growth? Because a lot of people that are tuning in right now, they're reading books or they're watching YouTube videos or they're going to events or, you know, they're, they're connecting with others. Like, where do you find most of your growth comes from, from your personal experience? Yeah. The way I look at it is we're cultivating a way of living, not a one and done kind of thing. Yeah. So all everything works. And so I hit it on all, every angle. I, 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 I work out the physical body every day. I do something. I'm going to put something nutrition in the, in the body. I'm going to drink the right food, drink the right uh, hydration, water, as you're doing right now. Um, yep. And then I do something for my mind. Well, I'll read something that stimulates the mind. I, I will meditate and I'll ask empowering questions. So I think for me, from my beginnings, uh, the most important thing was the meditation practice because that allowed me to see that who I am is independent of any circumstance. And once a person doesn't just believe that, you can believe it, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything if you just believe it. Yeah. You actually have to have an insight around it. And once you see, oh my God, I'm not what happened to me. I'm not just the experience, you start to be liberated, you start to be free. So there's meditation and and then there's uh, uh, making sure that uh, there's high conversation. So what you say is very important. So you, after a while, you train yourself to be with people in which your conversation is not complaining. Your conversation uh, is insightful, carries solutions. uh, things of that particular nature, mm. and and uh, and then taking care of the body temple because what's very important, what people don't understand is that we're all we're energy fields. 
we're, we're, we, we, we identify we have a body, but we're not the body. Yeah. We're, we're fields of energy. Now, when you have an insight, that means that something that is eternal is becoming active in your mind. That's a new form of energy coming in. But you have to be strong enough to hold it or it just becomes a memory. And so you have to take care of the body. You have to take care of the mind so that when the insight comes, you're able to hold the energetic field. And if you're able to hold the energetic field, you'll discover that you don't have to work as hard because your energy and the field that you're carrying starts to manifest for you. Think doors start to open. Possibilities start to emerge. Uh, potential starts to be activated. And you're not even really thinking about it. You've just become the energy of it, you see. So that happens with meditation. And that happens with right nutrition, right exercise, right focus, good conversation, stimulating the mind with good reading, you see. It's a, so it's a, it's, a, it's a whole way of living. Yeah, that's, that's that truly incredible. Bliss. Mm, I love that. I love it. I love it. Yeah, Michael, you know what? One thing I noticed about you, one real standout thing is I've seen you speak on stage before and you just have this like flow. You have this ease to you. You have this this trust in yourself. And you know, I'm speaking on stages now as well. I don't put slides up. I like to just... Uh, the, uh, last yeah. week, I, I got up with no plan, no prep, no structure. And I told the audience, like, I, ha I don't have this planned out, but I'm trusting myself. And I hope in turn it inspires you to trust yourself as well. And it was like one of my best speeches. And so Absolutely. when you're getting up and you're standing up there, like what is your, what are your kind of like thought processes or what do you know for sure about how you show up on stage and how you deliver? Like what are some things you've learned there? It, it is the, the, the word trust that you use is very important. I trust that that which brought me to the stage is also going to give me what I need to say to that particular audience. So sometimes when I get up to speak, I only have one sentence. I'll be, giving, I'll be given a sentence. Sometimes in my dream the night before, or sometimes when I'm waking up or in meditation, I'll get a sentence. And that one sentence becomes a starting point. And then after that, the energy starts to flow and it starts to, starts to give me what I'm to say to this audience that may be a little bit different for the next audience. Even when I'm doing three different services at Agape, you know, I'm, I'll have the same topic and the same theme, but it'll come out differently because each audience uh, is a little different. So I need to approach it differently. But I don't, I don't know that till I get there. So it's a, it's a complete trust in the energy that brought you there in the first place. It knows how to deliver itself, and what we're doing is kind of a disappearing act. <laughs> we're getting out of the way <laughs> so that the flow can happen. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. then the flow uses us. It uses our stories. It uses our personal stories. It uses our experience in life, the, the challenging ones and the inspiring ones. It uses every conversation we've ever had. It uses every book we've ever read. It, it uses everything to deliver its energy. Yes. And I, I, ca I call it surfing. I'm surfing energy. The energy's flowing, and I'm, I'm riding the wave of the energy, you know, and, and balancing and flowing and moving and, you know, so it's, it's a total energetic field that I'm surrendering to. Yeah. That's and amazing. it takes trust. And again, I, I can't overemphasize this. The meditation really opens up the channels mm. so that the, <clears throat> the invisible becomes visible and the inaudible becomes audible. You're actually hearing and seeing with a different spiritual faculty. Yeah. That, and the inner world, after a while, becomes more real than the external world. And I, I teach people that it's, it's not just who you're speaking to, it's where you're speaking from. So I'm speaking from a connection. And I'm not just speaking to an audience, I'm speaking from somewhere. And if I'm speaking from somewhere, it will connect in that same space within within the audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. I love how you say you, you're speaking from. And you know, I, I yeah. feel like when I'm on stage and I'm actually really visualizing quite a lot as well, it's, it's kind of like it's coming from there too. So like, what visualization practices uh, do you teach or wh wh how, do you, how do you go about visualization? Creative, creative imagery and visualization is very important. It creates a, a level of coherence where the mind is concerned. So there's a level, there's, there's, there's an order that's there. You're not all over the place. I, I, I practice visualization when I'm doing yoga. 
there'll be a posture that I'm trying to get into and I'm a little out of balance or something and suddenly I'll see myself behind me visualizing myself in the posture and then my body goes into it. I actually can visualize it and then I'm able to get into that asana a, a little bit greater. And so, uh, so I use visualization for that reason. Uh, I use visualization, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beginning step in being receptive to more good. And then the next step is um, visioning, in which, again, we talked about this a little bit, in which you ask questions. The questions take you beyond your imagination. See, in the beginning, you use your imagination and creative imagery and visualization to see what you want. But you don't want to stop there because it's infinite. And what, sometimes what you can see is based on your past. So you want to use visualization in the beginning to get yourself started. Then you want to throw yourself open to unlimited possibility and say, even that which I can't see right now, uh, the affirmation that I use sometimes is, I'm open and receptive to more good than I've ever experienced before, than anyone has ever experienced before. And so now I go beyond my present ability to visualize, you see. And so I use both. Mm. One's called stage two. Stage two is creative imagination, visualization. Stage three is visioning, power, empowering questions. Yeah. So I use both. Dance back and forth. Oh, I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah, it's like not waiting for the external world to create reference points. You create those new reference points yourself in your own mind. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, it's powerful. We have the ability to do it, so we might as well do it. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. What would Amen. it feel like if you were successful? You walk like that now. <laughs> <laughs> how, would your posture, how would your posture be if you felt confident? Walk yeah. like that now. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah. Start that conversation with the unconscious as if you're already there, like you're living it. Otherwise, it doesn't know yes. how to support you, right? No, it, 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 absolutely. I tell people, talk to yourself, not to the world. You know, talk to yourself, not to the world. The world will see you vibing and glowing, but it begins with your inner conversation. Yeah. So, have a, a lot of people have very bad conversations with themselves. You know, yeah. they talk to themselves very negatively. All those voices of doubt and worry and fear and shame and blame and mistakes that you made, they listen to those voices. They have to drown out those voices mm. and begin to talk to themselves in a very loving and powerful way. You can do it. You, you're, you're meant for greatness. You're meant for success. You're meant to be a servant of, of excellence and generosity and creativity. You have to talk to yourself until your body starts to believe you. Your body starts to produce tonic chemicals that flow through the body and amplify the immune system and create brain coherence and, 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 and slow down the aging process and, and build new muscle mass out of nothing. You know, you start to talk to yourself, your body starts to believe what you're saying, then you start to believe what you're saying and it becomes a, a, an endless loop of going to higher and higher levels of that dynamic conversation. Yeah, yeah, like a positive emotional flush. You're just flooding and flooding yes. it. Yeah, that's amazing. So, would you say that's the key to self love? Because I feel like a lot of people, uh, a lot of people make just series and series of bad decisions in their life because they they think that that decision they're going to make is going to fulfill them, and in turn, it makes their life worse. And it's because they don't love themselves. They're looking for something to fill right. them up. So that what you just mentioned, then, do you feel like that is the key to self love, or is there anything else that we're missing here? <laughs> It's one of the keys. Yeah. Self-love and appreciation is our beginning step of transformation. Yep. Where there is a lack of self-love, we end up running into obstacles that we are projecting ourselves. Mm. So when we fall in love with ourselves and we make choices from self-love and appreciation, there's an expansion of our world. Opportunities show up. So how do we do that? What, you, what we do, most people, what's wrong in their life and that's how they identify themselves what you do is you find something in something in your life that that's working even if it's something like you know what my heart is beating i'm really glad my heart is beating mm -hmm. you know you find something that's working and you create and you, you become a, available to a level of joy and gratitude about that 
And then you expand that with your breath, every breath you take, you keep expanding that feeling of gratitude and thanksgiving and joy about what's working. And that begins to be a vibrational base. Mm. You start to, to have joy and thanksgiving. You start to think about something you do well. You expand that. So you start to fall in love with that part of you that's doing that well and the part of you that's, that, that's working. And then you begin to allow that to be a part of the identity that you carry yourself. You know, I really do that well. I'm really grateful for this. That begins to be your vibrational base. So now you'll notice that the choices you're making is not to fill an imaginary hole within you. The choices that you're making is a choice to expand the feeling of, that, of the fact that you're all right and that you're grateful. So instead of walking to fill something that's not even there, no one has a hole in them, vibrationally, spiritually, I should say, you're walking to fulfill rather than to fill full. You see, there's, there's this fulfillment and there's fillfulment. And if you have an imaginary hole, you're walking around with fillfulment. If I, I'm going to fill, get a bunch of stuff to fill in this hole, it never works. But if you're walking with a sense of fulfillment, then the universe will there's more and more and more good flowing into your life with an ease and a grace and an elegance the same way that the universe never ever wastes any energy it's constantly recycling and and transmuting energy never losing or creating more and more energy we create the same way and elegance begins to happen in our own life and there's a an enthusiasm and a generosity and a, a creation and the creativity that happens because we're in the flow, self-love, gratitude. Wow, beautiful. Wow, so beautiful, so beautiful. Michael, thanks so much for sharing that with us. That's amazing. Well, there's so many like practical steps, exercises, insights that you've already shared and we're like only about half an hour in. So <laughs> thank you so much. I'm sure the audience will love this and uh, yeah, they can go and implement it straight away. So. You talked about meditation before. Let's go back. What are the what are the benefits of meditation? Why why meditate? Let's, let's describe what meditation is. Meditation is paying undistractable attention to reality. That's reality with a capital R. That means that which is forever, eternal, doesn't change. Like love is real. I'm not talking about sentimental love, romantic love. We're talking about the love of the spirit. Peace is eternal. Abundance is eternal. Beauty is eternal. Mm. Meditation is paying undistractable attention to these qualities and paying undistractable attention to the truth that your life is intrinsic it's, it's with these qualities. They're all in you. So you're learning to pay attention. And the benefits, first of all, the physical benefits is uh, the harmonizing of blood pressure. The physical benefits is uh, when you are able to keep your attention in the present is that um, the old begins to come up to be transmuted into higher frequencies so you end up being your own therapist the physical benefits is it slows down the aging process meditation is probably the greatest anti-aging thing you can do because most people are two tenths or three tenths they're either in the past or the future and so that creates a lot of stress creates a lot of toxic chemicals and cortisol that uh, increases your capacity to age faster. When you come into meditation, you come out of time. When you come out of time, aging stops, slows down. So one of the benefits of meditation is that it slows down your aging process and opens the field of creativity more and more and more within you. And it all leads to moments of awakening where you begin to awaken to who and what you are and whose you belong to. You belong to the universe. You belong to the cosmos. And the cosmos wants to become conscious of itself as your life. Abundance wants to become conscious as your life. Joy wants to become conscious as your life. Beauty wants to become conscious of itself as your life. So meditation opens all of this up by being still. Now there's an old Zen statement that says, to meditate 20 minutes a day. But if you're too busy, then you meditate an hour a day. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I believe that. I believe that. <laughs> because if you're too busy to meditate 20 minutes a day, your life is too busy. Yeah. That means you have some things that you need to eradicate in order to focus on your real identity. Yes, yes. Yeah, I wake up an hour early so I can do my 20 minutes of exercise, 20 minutes of self-development, and 20 minutes of meditation every day. And I've seen a massive shift in me just through practicing meditation. So I believe every word you're saying. Michael, yeah. where can we learn to meditate from you? Because I know you're a meditation instructor as well. Do you have anything coming up? or? I have, I have two things. One, I have this flyer right here. I'm doing a meditation retreat here in Lucerne Valley, California, June 16th through the 18th. They can go to agapelive.com and register. People come in from all over the country, local and the world, and I, I teach meditation. We practice meditation. We have yoga instructors. We have good food. We have good, powerful chanting music through Ricky BB. And, and it's, it's a wonderful time in which I bring people. I teach what meditation is, and then very importantly, we practice it. So June the 16th through the 18th, uh, here in Lucerne Valley, California, gopilive.com. Uh, they can come on in. There's still some spaces open. And uh, the people that come every year, I do a, a meditation in June. And I do a meditation at the end of the year in December. We, be, we end the year and begin the year in meditation. And, and people set their intentions and uh, open themselves up to great possibilities. It's a, a very powerful opportunity. There you go. So if you're listening right now, make time for this. And if you're, like Michael said, super busy to, to, or you feel like you're too busy to meditate, you should be at this retreat. <laughs> There's no Absolutely. doubt about it. If you don't have the time, you need to be here. <laughs> it's counterintuitive. But if you don't have the time, that means you really need to be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And Michael, you're also in uh, the Rise Up movie with, uh, with Tony Robbins, Jack Canfield, Lisa Nichols, Marie Folio. Uh, I mean, it's there's a crazy lineup. But what is yes. what does rise up mean to you? Yeah, for for me, you know, I, it's very important at this time in human history that we begin to shift the narrative around what success is. Yeah. Success used to be hoarding. Success used to be getting, accumulating, uh, getting a bunch of trophies on your wall, getting a bunch of letters behind your name. Success used to be uh, just accumulating a bunch of stuff. And whoever had the most stuff at the end of their life won the game. Success to me has basically evolved to how much can you give before you leave this planet? How much can you circulate? How can you activate your gifts and talents and express them with the full knowledge that your gift doesn't even belong to you? Your gift belongs to the community. And it is nothing unless it is shared. And so when we talk about success now, we're talking about, uh, you know, a great example of that was Paul Newman, who after winning an Oscar or something said, you know, I don't want my whole life to be lived trying to get trophies and money. I want to give more. I want to, I want to, see, I want to change the game. I want to see how much money I can give away before I die. And that's when he developed his nonprofit corporation that at the time of his death had given away millions and millions and millions of dollars to spiritual communities and charities and things of that particular nature. So when I think about rise up, I'm thinking about each of us rising up to our highest potential mm -hmm. and then giving as much as we can. Like the sun, the sun shines and radiates and creates life on this planet. We want to see ourselves as many suns, radiant, how much can I share? How much can I radiate before I plant it? Of course, we're going to have to develop our skills. Of course, we have to find our intrinsic talents and gifts. We have to cultivate them. Of course, we have to ready and prepare ourselves. We have to stabilize our structures, our financial structure, our health structure, our relationship structure. But ultimately, why are we, why are we stabilizing those structures? So that we can give more. We can shine more. We can radiate more. So when we finally leave this place, our gifts aren't mad at us for not expressing them, and we're not mad at ourselves for hoarding rather than shining and celebrating. Yeah. So when I think about Rise Up, I think about a new meme for success, a new narrative, you see. And that's what time it is, because the Earth, the old narrative 
we're going to destroy the planet. We're going to keep strip mining. We're going to keep uh, eradicating the rainforests. We're going to keep polluting the rivers and the oceans. We're going to keep polluting the environment. We're going to keep going into immature composition, competition, I mean. We're going to keep uh, overrunning the borders of other people through war and, and stealing of, of national resources. We need a new, a new message about what real success is. It has something to do with communion and cooperation and generosity and sharing and creativity. That's what Rise Up means to me. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really excited about this project. I know uh, I feel like it's going to shift so many mindsets. And also something that I was really uh, excited about too when I heard about the project was that I feel like it's going to wake a lot of people up that are like so-called leaders in the industry of self-development, personal growth that are going to go, wow, it, it's not about selling from the stage and doing, you know, like taking from the people and making it just about money and the suits and the cars and the watches and the bling bling. And it like almost after this comes out, it's not going to be accepted anymore. Like people are going to be like, no, 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 I get that game you're trying to play. That's not what this is actually about. So I'm really right. excited for this to come out. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, key words like compassion, generosity, uh, 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 giving, these will have a whole new meaning. And not just giving to get a pat on yourself on, on the back or but to give because that is the nature of who we are. Everything is in symbiotic relationship. We give, you know, carbon, you know, we, we express, and then the plants take what we breathe out and gives us back oxygen. Everything is, is cooperating with each other. But if you try to hold your breath, you will die, you know? <laughs> and so, <laughs> in that same way, uh, we, wanna, we wanna step up and be generous beings. Yeah. And uh, we, can, we the more successful we become, the more generous we become simultaneously. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Well, two of the most powerful questions you can ask yourself is who am I and why am I here? And so it's like, what that's are it. you doing here in, on, on earth? Are you wasting your time just breathing in the air but not putting anything back out into the world? And so um, it was beautiful how you said we're all like suns and we're just like, you know, beaming. Yes. Like, why not beam and, and yeah, give life? Yeah, it's amazing. Thank you so much, Michael. So we're nearing the end of this interview. Uh, the last question I'd love to ask uh, each, uh, each interviewee is that uh, if you were to deliver your last 30 second speech to the world, what would that last 30 seconds sound like? Every being who has ever crossed the great divide and come back to tell about it is I'll say the very same thing that our time on this planet is about the perfection of our loving. How well we loved. Not how much we got, but how well we loved. So my last 30 seconds, I would tell everybody, I love you, and go forth and magnify the love. Let all of your encounters be existential with, and filled to overflowing with love to the best of your ability. Because at the end of the day, you're gonna meet the love that you gave out.